Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number 33. Hey, we're in the Workbook Business Math Chapter 3. If you want to download this and follow along, go to my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link and you can download this workbook. If you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, here we are talking about rates of change for stocks. Here's all the stocks we bought. Wow, we bought them on March 1st, 2007. Here's all the prices. Well, the problem is, as I shoot this video, this is uh, March 11th, 2009, and there has been a financial uh, tornado that has hit our uh, globe in the last two years. So stocks, of course, have come tumbling down. I want to show you how to get the current price and uh, link it to the internet through Microsoft website to the stock market so that as you oh, when you come back and open up this workbook these can be updated and then we'll calculate our gain or loss now in terms of the class I'm not gonna uh, this won't be on a test or anything this web query the percentage change will be now here it is we have our stocks and our stock symbols it's very important you have the symbols because that is what will tell the web query how to get the right price for whatever today's date is. Let's go to our data and in the get external data I'm going to have to expand the size of our uh, ribbon here. Get external data we want existing connections. In 2003 and earlier versions you have to go to the data menu and then get external data existing connections so it's a, a menu instead of a ribbon that you do um, if this doesn't pop up then you have to actually browse and try to find the the query for this but almost always it will pop up investor stock quotes I'm gonna double click that and it says where do you want to dump this data hey I want to dump it right down here Uh, we can look at the properties, save query definition, refresh every, you could refresh it every 60 minutes whenever the file is open. So if you want to check those, like you have, you check your stocks every day. Um, the rest of it is, oh, I don't want to adjust column width because then it will change uh, the size of that perfectly formatted column up there. Click OK. Now, it's all so far all we've done is said, hey, this is where I want it. You click OK. You could type the symbols in, but forget that. We already have them typed into our spreadsheet, so you simply highlight. Zip. Use this value for refreshes for future refreshes, or values or references for future refreshes. That means and when you open this up, you can just right click refresh. So you got to check that. Click OK. It takes a second. It's going, zip. it's going out to the stock market, and it looks like it dumped it right there. No way. Now let's see. Uh, Amazon is 68.24. Let's right click anywhere in this web query. Right click and you see that refresh right there? And it should refresh. Why does it refresh? Does it refresh in the middle at 12, 12 midnight? No, because it's not the stock markets on open. But as long as the stock markets are open, uh, that price will update. Right click refresh as much as you want. Now, notice these Amazon, Crispy, McDonald's, Merck, they're all in the same order as these, just like our spreadsheet. So we can do a relative cell reference. Our current price equals this right here. And notice, you know, it's like 20 cells down. So when I control enter and I double click the fill handle and copy it down, it gets it exactly perfect. Wow, look at all the massive losses. Amazon, wow, they've had a very successful. Uh, online company. In fact, during the 2008 Christmas season, they were one of the only companies to be doing really well. The rest of the uh, retailers weren't, weren't doing so well. But look, we have huge losses. Uh, it looks like McDonald's said, okay, Merck, huge loss. Citigroup, wow, of course, because uh, you know they were doing credit default swaps and all that kind of stuff, which in hindsight looks almost criminal. Certainly not smart. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and do our formula for rate of change. And what is it? It's end divided by begin minus 1. So equals our end divided by begin minus 1. Whoa, we went up by 75%. Hey, I'm going to double click. And when I double click this, all the um, 
the ones where we lost money are going to turn red because I have some conditional forming. Double click. Look at that. Uh, Krispy Kreme down by 87%, so the rate of change is that. Uh, McDonald's went up, the rate of change is positive 15.83. Merck, City, oh, Citigroup, rate of change minus 96.95%. The nerve of some of these big banks, Bank of America and Citigroup, going out there, uh, we put their money into the bank, right? And they take our money and they go and do really risky things. Why? Because they know the government will come in uh, and bail them out, not only because there's FDIC insurance, but because they're too big to fail. That too big to fail thing is being debated right now. Uh, ben Bernanke and other people just the last couple days in Congress but they're not talking enough about too big to fail it should be that they're not allowed to get that big lots of smaller companies means there's lots of competition and that's good hey uh, so there it is uh, let's check this can we do it another way we could do it the long way right equals oh um, how about we take the um, end amount right here divided by the associated rate and we better get the original uh, begin price so I'm going to try that equals the associated part which is n divided by the rate of change now wait a second that won't work because if these are not the associated uh, part and rate this is the rate of change that's associated with the amount of change this is the end amount which is associated with the rate. Hey, but watch this. Right in this formula, we can just do our formula for rate. 1 plus whatever the rate of change is. 1 plus. And notice, because we have negatives and positives, we can just do this one formula, and it will always get it right. Close parentheses, control enter, and then I'm going to, if you double click and send it down, it won't work because there's not something to the left or right. You can do it. Uh, just like this. If you had a huge column like thousands of rows, you could actually right click, hide, and then double click and send it down. And then notice E, A, B, C, D, G. Wait a second, there's a missing letter. So you highlight the two columns, right click, unhide, like that. Now we didn't need, it would have been faster to do it this way, but that was just a trick if you had, you know, a thousand rows and you didn't want to pull it down. All right, so there you go. It looks like we got it right. We used our little formula. We did a little trickery with that one plus to get the rate. All right, um, that's the end of chapter three. We'll see you next chapter, chapter four for banking, I think it is.